Hey guys, Dan Rice, FHCOutdoors.com. Today's video is pretty special to me. It's going to be my first video on my new bass boat. Picked up a Skeeter ZX200 uh, for 2016. So I'm really, really excited because I can fish some of those bigger bodies of water. Uh, I can gain more experience on them, and especially when it comes to smallmouth and largemouth. Of course, you probably know that it's a little bit easier to dial in the fishery if you have good electronics. So today's video is going to be pretty, pretty in-depth. So it might not be the shortest video, but for you guys who have purchased new electronics like me, there's really no guide as to how to go through the settings and some of the things that you need to change in order to make your Lowrance units a little bit better and more efficient for you. So I'm going to go through some of those tips and tricks that I've learned over the last week after getting my units installed. And uh, we're going to go from there and hopefully that these will help you uh, when it comes to on the water and your Lowrance settings. Okay, so as soon as you power up your Gen 3 unit for the first time, you're going to be taken through some really common sense questions such as do you use your unit for freshwater or ice fishing um, and, and so on. And so you're going to get through those questions I'm sure just fine on your own. But as soon as you finish that, you're going to come to the home screen or what Lowrance calls the pages screen. You have a menu here on the left that you can scroll up and down, and you have a menu here on the right, such as choosing the, your sonar layout. On, you can edit, you can add, and we're going to get into some of those features there. But first off, what I want you to do is scroll down to settings. And as soon as you click settings, you're going to see a sub-menu here with your options on the left. You can change your language, the text size, uh, if you want your keypad to beep so on and so forth, the time, some of these basic things that you're probably going to want to go into. Um, but one of the first things that I noticed was there's really no one-size-fits-all kind of Lowrance settings. And so that's what I want to get through to you guys today. The first thing I want you to do is come down here and click Sonar. Now, in this menu or the sub-menu here, there's, a, there's quite a few options, but you're going to want to go ahead and hit Installation first. Don't really worry about the keel offset or the water speed calibration or anything like that. But what you're going to want to do is hit transducer type. And um, for this particular boat, I have the Lowrance HDS9 and I have two transducers. I have the structure scan transducer and then I also have an 83200. So that 83200, you're going to want to choose in this menu systems, but it's not labeled 83200. It's actually labeled HST WSBL. So I'm going to choose that. Now that recognizes the 83200 transducer that's installed in the back of the boat, a through hole. Um, but one of the other things that I didn't know was the structure scan transducer is automatically detected. So you don't actually have to choose it anywhere. We're going to go ahead and hit save. Now let's go back you can get back to the settings menu that we were just at one of two ways. You can hit the pages button and it brings you right back. Or let's say you're in your sonar looking at things. You can hit the power button once and go to settings just like that. So now that we have our sonar transducer detected on the back, you know that you're going to get a clear image and you're going to use the power that you need for that particular unit. Um, let's go down and go through some settings that I've changed. So go back up to system. Of course, key beeps, I have them off because they just kind of get annoying if you try to do tutorials like this. Uh, you can kind of scroll down and go to advanced. And in here you have different sub menus such as waypoints, hardware, features, time zones, and internet. Of course, the new Gen 3s, they are um, pre hardware for Wi-Fi. So I can actually pick up my Wi-Fi signal here in my garage from my house. So um, it makes things a lot easier. Uh, but let's go into waypoints. Um, an option such as controls whether more than one waypoint can have the same name. I don't care if I have duplicate names because if I put a waypoint and I say, um, you know, largemouth or something like that, if I'm on the water and I choose, you know, maybe I'm on a different lake and then I hit waypoint and try to name it largemouth, if this is not turned on, you'll actually have to sit there and waste time by renaming it something different. So I leave that on. Hardware, enable sticker backlight. There's a light here on the back side of this Lowrance unit and it actually glows a, kind of a soft light. If that bothers you at night, you can come in here to hardware and turn that off. User interface, I actually have not changed anything in here, so I'm going to go ahead and skip user interface. For features, of course, I want my sonar on. 
um, you can use uh, for spotlight, which is uh, um, turns on to allow spotlight simulation or the spotlight sonar. I don't have that um, up front, so I just leave it off. Structure, of course, I want to see my structure features, so that's turned on. If you add structure scan 3D to your units, you're going to want to come in here and turn that on. Um, everything else I've actually just left default. So features is done. Time zones. Um, I actually haven't changed anything in here, and I'm not going to. Um, right down to internet, uh, and we are basically set here. So these are some of the advanced settings. Like I said, I've only changed a couple. Everything else is good just by default. Lorance does a pretty good job. Um, what you can do here is drop down to navigation. Now what this allows you to do is go through some of these advanced settings, uh, but I have left everything default under navigation. For chart, this is where you can come in and, and customize your screen a little bit, and I do recommend you come into chart. Um, it allows you to choose your 3D uh, icon for um, your mapping, so uh, I chose a bass boat because I'm a bass fisherman, so I want to see a little bass boat on the screen when it comes to mapping. Let's see, boat settings, I haven't changed anything. I'm just going to cancel out of that. Now here's some uh, important features that you can get into. There's range rings, heading extension, or course extension. And what these are basically, course extension are the little arrows that pop out um, from your boat so that you can actually tell on your mapping kind of where you're headed. And so I chose course extension on and pretty much left everything else by default. You can go into some of these settings. Uh, like I said, this is so far in depth that I'm not going to really need to change anything for my waypoints, routes, and trails. So I'm just going to leave it alone. Sonar, here's what you're going to want to do in this tab. Um, I have this unit and my front HDS9 networked. And so I clicked network sonar on so that it will share waypoints and information between the two units. Um, you can overlay your down scan. Um, which some of those features I'll actually get into in a second video when it comes to advanced features. For fishing mode, right away you're going to want to change this to shallow water. Um, there's a couple of tutorials out there that tell you to choose shallow water or fresh water, but shallow water, uh, from what I understand, is best used for anything under 100 feet. So since I'm not mostly fishing for bass beyond 100 feet, I'm going to change this to shallow water. It's going to give you the best picture and separation possible for freshwater bass fishing. Um, let's see here, and of course we already went into the installation to choose our transducer type. So let's go back to settings here, and we finished up the sonar tab. Autopilot, I haven't changed anything, I left default. Fuel, I don't have, um, you know, the intelligent hookups for, you know, monitoring my fuel and all that kind of stuff. I use my default boat gauges here on my Skeeter. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave fuel um, and s let's see, alarms alone. Units, you can get in here and change if you need to change distance, speed from you know, miles per hour to kilometers per hour or whatever. Um, I'm in the U.S., so I keep everything um, you know, by default. Temperature, if you are Celsius, you're going to want to come change that. Uh, but everything else, I pretty much leave standard. For wireless, this is where you can connect to your wireless um, router if you have wireless internet at home. And so it's really, really easy. It was, to be honest, it only took me a couple seconds. As soon as you get your password, you come in here and uh, you will basically connect to your network. It shows you um, the available network connections. You might pick up your neighbor's houses, so make sure that you choose your home network. And as soon as you put in your password, it, uh, it fires right up and, and you're able to uh, make changes over Wi-Fi. So just to show you, I'm picking up probably close to, well, probably 20, 15 to 20 different Wi-Fi networks in my neighborhood. So you're going to want to make sure that you connect to your, um, your particular Wi-Fi network. Um, let's see here. For network, I haven't changed anything. Vessels, nothing, and simulator. And this is basically, you can, this is what I'm on right now. I want to simulate the different aspects of the Lorange HDS9 Gen 3. So I have it turned on here. Okay, so let's get into another type of menu settings that you can come in here and change. Um, if we're back at the pages button or the home screen, what you can do is just touch the power button 
and you have a system controls panel that comes up. Now there, these are some of the basic functions of the LCD screen that you're probably going to want to change or alter sooner or later. It's not necessarily important right now because I'm in my garage and I'm, I'm kind of showing you guys um, you know, step by step what to change, but some of the important features would be you know, your settings button again, which would take us into the previous menu that we just did. There's a standby mode kind of shuts the unit down. It still records, it's still doing sonar, but it's kind of a standby mode and saves battery. Um, power off, of course, if you want to power off the unit. Brightness, you can come in here and change. Um, just in case, you know, for example, like right now, I'm doing uh, a tutorial and you can see just by changing the brightness of the screen, it actually helps with my camera's auto zoom around it. Uh, I'm gonna kind of keep it bright right now because I think it's important for some of the features I'm about to show you. Um, night mode, if you're fishing at night, it changes the uh, text colors and everything. It's a lot easier to see red at night, so it changes a lot of the text to red and some of those features. Um, there's a touch lock. There's your wireless settings again. You can change your Wi-Fi connection or change to a different access point. Um, autopilot, autopilot standby I'll never use. And so, um, you know, some of the features here are really, really crucial to uh, your experience with the Lorentz unit. Okay, so back at the home screen, let's go through some of the settings when it comes to your chart, sonar, structure scan. Uh, a lot of this information such as steer, um, you know, I don't use particularly because I just, I just don't use it. It's, a lot of this information is kind of overkill for me. Um, I know a lot of offshore guys would probably use that. Some of this detailed information um, I'm also not going to use. Uh, I prefer charts and, and looking for fish. So um, if you are going to change this, you can change the layouts and, and make it look like a dashboard and, and change the layout. Uh, but ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of the pre-made templates over here on the right. Now this is a chart slash 2D sonar. This is a chart slash structure scan screen. You have your 2D and structure scan. And then you get into some of the uh, multi-screen such as having this, which is a 2D chart here on the, over on the left, structure scan, side imaging or side scan up here on the top, and then you have your um, down scan here on the bottom. So what I like to do is kind of have those paired up. And what I mean by that is if I choose this particular screen here, I created this. I want structure scan on the left, I want my 2D sonar up on top, and I want my down scan of that 2D down here on the bottom. So let me go back and change the settings to simulation and I'm going to show you why I like this particular screen. What happens now is I've just told the unit to go into a simulator mode and it's going to allow me to look at some fish and some uh, structure and, and the 2D sonar to kind of explain to you why I like this particular screen. So when I set up my unit I like this because one as an HDS9 I don't have a ton of screen when it comes to you know a three, three screen approach. If I had an HDS 12, it would be a lot more screen and you could kind of make it work a little bit better. But what I want on my, on my left is my structure scan and I'll tell you why. One, it basically splits the screen in half and I'm allowed to really look out about 60 feet with a comfortable level of detail. Now if I were to change this and you know I actually have it on manually 60 feet, but if I were to change this, this screen is highlighted here. If I come over here and I do range, and I scroll up and I go to auto, look what happens. It takes my 60 foot that I had manually and does it to 120 feet and you can see that I am losing so much detail because I'm shooting so far out each side. 120 feet to the left, 120 feet to the right. So what you can do on the water is most anglers will actually manually adjust their side scan. So uh, for this for the sake of this video, between 60 and 80 feet is, is optimal, even on the water. And what you can do is you can see that I clearly have uh, some more detail that I've gained by shrinking my side scan feet down. Um, I like my 2D sonar up here and I like that same, ima same image of down scan on the bottom so I can quickly compare both images here. Of course, you're seeing a bunch of fish here on the simulator, and if you look down here, you actually, these little white dots here, you can confirm that those are fish, those are bait fish. Um, so, you know, with the structure scan on the left, and then the two 2D sonar and the down scan, I can quickly compare, I have a complete snapshot of all things sonar. So this is probably gonna be my most uh, used 
I guess, layout when it comes to, to uh, editing those screens. But I'm going to show you right now uh, what you can do is once you get particular screens involved, you can click it and then you can change just that particular um, you know, layout for that particular, that particular screen. So frequency, range, all that kind of stuff. Um, I have it on auto. It detects the bottom fairly well. The frequency uh, to, you know, you can go high chirp. Um, so chirp settings basically uh, give the unit a much more detailed approach as to separation and clarity. So uh, high chirp is really, really good. You can go to a medium chirp, um, but I do prefer high from, from everything that I've seen. You can go into advanced settings and you can do noise rejection. Um, I want more noise, re more noise rejection. And if you go into high, you actually get uh, a cleaner image. So um, I kind of like lower medium, but I like to see things on the screen. Surface clarity, you can go low and look right away. It, it actually takes away most of that uh, noise there up on the top. That's off, that's low, medium, and high. So you can see just by doing some of these settings, I'm clearly looking for the separation and the shape of the fish that are down below. I like low, I'll keep it there. Uh, your scroll speed, your, your ping speed, you can go into manual mode. Um, and so each little layout screen can be customized. Let's say I like this 2D sonar and the colors, but I want to change this down scan because I'm kind of having a hard time picking up some, some of these fish on the down scan. You can come over here and change the palette. Looking at red, when it comes to colors, it's a lot easier to see white subjects in red because they pop more. So just by changing that to red, I can actually see some of the detail of these fish down here a lot easier than the standard kind of, you know, pewter or grayscale. Um, that some of these colors actually make the fish pop even more. There's an inverse and you can go through here and pick colors that might help you out on the water identify fish or structure a little bit better. Let's see, so go back to our structure scan. Now, one other thing I will say is when I set this up, I couldn't understand when I would go to select this page button right here, it would show this. I'll actually show you. By default, when you do this and you're adding structure scan pages, this is my structure scan or my side scan on the left. This is the 2D sonar. And then again, it had a duplicate, duplicate side scan. What you need to do is go over here to the right, click view, and you want your down scan. And it's going to change it so that you're not looking at two different side scans. That's probably one of the hardest things I found when it comes to changing up the unit settings. It took me like 20 minutes and it was right there in front of my face, but I eventually found it. So when you're back here at the home screen, you know, you have several options to choose from. Maybe you just want to look at a chart and you kind of want to see exactly where you are on the lake. You can zoom in here with your keys or you can zoom in with your fingers. My fingers are so cold right now. It's like 42 degrees. And with this particular overlay that you see here on this map, this is what they call the structure overlay. Okay, so if you had side imaging and you're going down the bank and you actually wanted to see a history and what things look like on a macro you know, picture, you can come over here and change the structure overlay. There's a weather option or you can even turn it off and that's when you don't see any of those structure op options being laid over the map. So, um, you know, your overlay is a big deal because a lot of guys now like to see if they're idling what's going on and where they've been and kind of what's underneath the water on the map itself. And so you can still see your contour lines and you can still see your side imaging and your structure scan, uh, but it's just overlaid on the map. Um, of course, you have different chart options over here on the right. You can look ahead. There's 3D for those guys that do 3D mapping. Um, and you can even change the chart source from Lowrance to Navionics. So probably one of the easiest things to do is to change your layouts and to make 
one of these layouts your own. Of course, I just showed you that I prefer this kind of setup, but if we go back to the Pages button, you can come, come down here to the bottom and hit the plus sign. Now what you can do is you can add panels. So regardless if it's your chart, your sonar, the info screen, or a structure scan, you can actually add and, and change up the way that things look. And so you could do, for example, a chart on one side, and you could do structure scan on the other. And you know, keep it like that, you can save it. Or maybe you wanted to add one more thing. Uh, we want to look at um, another, oh, another sonar screen. And so you can change the way that they look, you can change the panels, and you can basically combine any which way you want uh, for your particular layouts. Um, of course, you would save it, you can discard it, and do you want to discard your changes? Yes, because I don't really like that. Uh, but this is my favorite because I just feel like I get the most um, efficiency out of my screen for everything that I want to do. Okay, last but not least for this very long video, um, let's go into chart and I want to show you guys how to add waypoints. This is probably one of the most basic things that you're going to want to know how to do, uh, but at the same time, um, it's very, very efficient if you can just hit one button and move on because, you know, let's just say we were to go down um, you know, this entire shoreline was structure scan. And as we move along, you can see the boat's position. Of course, the simulator's on, I'm really not moving or anything. But there would be certain points in the structure scan that might be of interest to me. You know, if it's pre-spawn and I see some of these areas and there's some structure just outside of some flats, I might want to mark, you know, multiple waypoints. And so you just move your cursor, you hit the little flag over here, and you can hit save and bam, you have a waypoint on there. You can change the way or the little icon for the waypoint. Maybe it's a, a green fish for largemouth or maybe um, you, know, you saw a deer swimming in the middle of the lake. You can hit deer and um, you know, who knows? There's so many icons that you can change. You can tailor this to your personal needs. Um, and you can basically go down this structure or this map and just hit multiple points even after you've idled all the way past it. Um, the great thing about this is that in the recording and the, and the memory, it allows you to kind of go back and look at things. Even if we were to go back to our sonar, our 2D sonar, um, and something, you know, maybe we've idled 30, 40, 50 yards, but something back there inter you know, interests us and we want to get back to it, you can take it. And if you come here up at the top and you just touch the screen, I can zoom and I can go all the way back to maybe this big old school of fish right here um, or this particular you know, hump of grass or, or, or weed line. And I can touch it, I can hit my flag again, and bam, I hit and save my waypoint just like that. So there's some really cool features that just help make things a little bit um, you know, better and faster on the water. Uh, the great thing is, is that it's still recording as I'm moving my boat or even just sitting there. All I have to do is hit clear cursor and I go back to where I am right now. All right guys, so as you can see, there's a lot of settings and I really haven't found a good tutorial when it comes to picking out some of those really, really crucial settings to get the unit started. There's a lot of things that you can do to customize it, of course, from you know, the layouts and the panels all the way through to what transducers you're using. And, and a lot of that's technical. Um, but if you follow these particular directions, you'll get your unit up and running to the, to the point to where you can function, you can go out on the water and use it to help you catch fish. As you move, as you explore, and as you gain experience with the particular unit that you have, you're going to go ahead and probably find out a lot of things later down the road that this video doesn't cover. But at the same time, it's going to help you get started. And, and that's really all we need to do is find a starting point, grow our experience, and then use those experiences to get better on the water. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, this did cover the Lowrance Gen 3 HDS 9 Wi-Fi capabilities. There's a lot of, a lot of built-in functions that make everything a lot easier. But if you have one of the older units, you can still pretty much use a lot of these settings. Uh, it's just going to look a little bit different in, in how you navigate that. But um, you know what? I'm really excited. I have, uh, you know, I'm 32 years old. I've waited a long time to finally get my bass boat and, um, you know, to get graphs that will help me on the water. That's what I need. I need a little bit help when it comes to identifying structure, locations, and ultimately finding and, and, and catching those fish. So 
Uh, thanks so much for watching. There's going to be a part two where uh, I dig into some of the little more advanced features. Uh, but for right now, I think that's going to get a lot of people started. And by all means, if you have any questions, post them down below. Um, help me help people catch fish. That's my goal. FHCoutdoors.com. We'll see you guys on the next video.